Hey everyone, welcome to Willow's Whimsy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, just to let you know, this is Niecy's Many Musings, and I do it every, I post this every Wednesday, and um, it's the potluck, so it's anything my other series don't uh, contain within them. It can be an opinion piece, a rant, it can be a story time, it can be whatever. And just to let you guys know, I am having a giveaway. I'm going to go ahead and post the link to that video right up there. If you click on that video, down in the description of it, there's timestamps. So you can get right to the giveaway um, information and you do need to be a subscriber. So uh, I have shot this video five times today and was completely... I just didn't like it <laughs> and then all of a sudden so when we moved mom into assisted living a year ago um, there were lots of little treasures I found and one of them was this little book it's called the book of questions and it was by Gregory Stock who is a PhD and this was my dad's my grandpa dad and so it's just questions and he would go through and answer them and so I'm gonna share his answers to some of these questions and I'll probably do this from time to time because it's food for thought you know it might even give me because I struggle with this series um, some ideas of topics you know so it says the first the very first question and um, he answered this question twice once October 15th of 1993 and once on December 7th of 1994 I think that's so cool uh, for a person you loved, and he underlined, my dad underlined loved, deeply. Would you be willing to move to a distant country knowing there would be little chance of seeing your friends or family again? And he said it depends on other considerations existing at the time, such as loving several persons deeply, perhaps in different ways for different reasons, and as to other opportunities available. Um, Dad was very analytical and he was very, um, he, he was an emotional man. He had feelings and all of that. So when I say that he was analytical um, and practical, I don't mean without feeling, but he was very, practical so that makes sense to me um, for a person you loved deeply would you be willing to move to a distant country knowing there would be little chance of seeing your friends or family again I'm in a little bit different situation first of all what kind of love are we talking about because for me I've shared openly that I don't ever want to be in a relationship ever again like that whole romantic love thing freaks me out for lots of different reasons and if you've watched any of my other series you kind of know why uh, that is not something I'm looking for so what if one of my kids moved to a different country and said mom I need you to come with me right now I wouldn't because my mom needs me you know we're going to be moving in together and I'm going to be taking care of her uh, so I couldn't I couldn't um, if mom passed and that opportunity came up I don't think I would you guys I don't think I would um, I have three children who I love equally and who fill my heart and I don't see it, all of them the same amount of time you know I see my youngest the most because she lives with me uh, I see my middle child, my daughter, um, probably the second <clears throat> most just because um, I, I just do. And I see my son the least, I think because part, you know, his work hours, he lives with his girlfriend. So, you know, I don't want to just descend upon them all the time. Um, but I'm there when he needs me and we do see each other. So anyway. I couldn't leave two of them for the sake of one of them. Uh, we're a package deal is how I look at this. And anyone else that I loved, I I wouldn't love enough to leave my kids. I just wouldn't. 
whether it's, well, it would be a friend or a different family member. Uh, I would go visit them. I would FaceTime them. I would talk to them. I would do all that. So there's my long ass answer. Uh, question number two. And he answered this also on October 15th of 93 and December 7th of 94. Do you believe in ghosts or evil spirits? And he wrote, not really. Would you be willing to spend a night alone in a remote house that is supposedly haunted? And he said, haunted wouldn't make any difference, but security or safety measures would. I love this. I got to share this with the family that I found this treasure. Um, I believe in ghosts and I believe some of them are angry. I believe that there are things we don't know about and <clears throat> some people, religious people would call them demons. Uh, you know, I'm someone who believes that just across the veil, like there's this whole other world and I believe in fairies and sprites and pixies and trolls and goblins and Middle Earth, um, <clears throat> elves and elementals. I believe in all of that and I believe there's some crossover. So in my mind, some things could be perceived, you know, as demons, but they're not. And they're just a part of nature we don't fully understand because they're connected to the nature here, but also the nature across the veil. And um, <clears throat> um, some of them are naughty and feisty and tricksy. So uh, would I spend a night in a haunted house? My dad mentioned security, but here's the thing. If you believe in all that, what security is there <laughs> against them? Um, no, no, I wouldn't. Not because I'm scared, just if something is supposed to come to me, it'll come to me. If something is supposed to be made known to me, it'll make itself known. I don't need to go looking for it. It just, that's not something I've ever been into, so... We'll do one more question and then I'm going to um, stop for today. So I think whenever you guys, I really don't have a topic, I'll just do this because it's kind of interesting. Put down in the comments what your answers would be. Dad, uh, Dad answered this question on October 7th of 94. If you were to die this evening with no opportunity to communicate with anyone, what would you most regret not having told someone? Why haven't you told them yet? He said, I love you. And one thing I appreciate very much about you or one thing you add to my life and others is. So I guess what he was saying was that, uh, I, and he didn't say who this was about for him. He had lost his first wife back in 1960. Um, she died of cancer, Lois. But I get the feeling that he was answering this not in a personal way, but in a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like he was just answering it in general. He would want to have said, I love you. He would want to have said one thing he appreciated very much about the people he loved or one thing that they added uh, to his life. I miss him. This is a treasure. I'm going to say goodbye and I will see you guys next week for another Nisi's Many Musings. Love you guys. Bye.